Good morning. I welcome you to this session. Today, we will discuss the force exerted and the power generation, the force exerted on the runner of a Francis turbine and the power generation. Uh, last class, we discussed the head across the runner or across a Francis turbine, what is meant by net head across a Francis turbine uh, or the head or the uh, work developed by the Francis turbine and the variation in the head during the flow in the Francis turbine. Today, we will discuss the force exerted by the water on the Francis runner and the corresponding power generation. Let us uh, see a typical Francis runner, first analyze, let us see how a Francis runner blade, if you look a sectional view is like this, this is the inlet. If I draw the inlet velocity triangle, it will be like this. Let me draw the inlet velocity triangle. Now, let this Francis runner is moving, is rotating. Let this is the rotor, this is the inlet, this is the outlet, this rotates is the rpm. So, this is the direction of velocity. At the outlet also, we can draw the diagram this. So, this is the rotor velocity at the inlet u 1, this is the relative velocity of the liquid with respect to the rotor v r 1 and this is the absolute velocity v 1. The outlet velocity triangles look like this, this is the velocity v 2, this is the outlet relative velocity or the outlet v r 2 and this is the rotor velocity u 2. Now, if we take a particular vein, this is like this, the section of the vein is like this through which the water flows between two veins. So, we can draw the velocity vector diagram or the velocity triangles at inlet and outlet like this. Now, the function of the guide vein is to direct the velocity in such a way that the relative velocity always makes the same angle as that of the angle of the vein at the inlet. That means, this angle if we denote at beta 1 is the angle which the vein at its inlet makes with the tangential direction. The u 1 is the rotor velocity in the tangential direction, the linear rotor velocity which depends upon the rpm of the rotor and the radial distance at this inlet point from the axis of rotation. Let this is the axis of rotation. When the fluid flows through the runner vein and comes out, the runner vein is designed in such a way that fluid comes out without any tangential component. It is perpendicular to the tangential direction. So, therefore, this is V 2 and this is the rotor velocity or the tangential velocity of the rotor at the outlet, which depends upon the rotational speed and the radius. Uh, radius at the outlet from the axis of rotation and this is the corresponding relative velocity of the liquid with respect to the rotor and this also should match with the vein angle at the outlet. That means, if I denote this as beta 2, this is the vein outlet angle. Now, the flow through the runner you have to understand the main direction of flow through the runner is radial and tangential at the inlet radial and tangential at the inlet, but while it flows out of the runner, the tangential velocity is almost diminished. There is no tangential velocity, so the flow becomes radial or little axial. This is very important. That means, if you look a turbine, for example, the turbine runner in a horizontal plane with the shaft at the shaft being the vertical. So, the inlet is in a horizontal plane in a direction such that it has got both tangential component and the radial component. While flowing through the rotor, it comes out mostly in a different plane with a radial flow and an axial flow and ultimately it is turned completely in an axial direction which is vertical is downward in case of a vertical shaft that is along the draft tube. So, you have to understand this way that it enters in a direction which is combination of radial and tangential. This is known as a mixed flow. 
radial and tangential. So, the flow through the runner is usually termed as mixed flow, which is which has got both radial component and the tangential component. While it flows out of the runner, the tangential component is reduced almost to 0. It is discharged mostly in the radial direction and axial direction, little axial component is there. That means, when it comes out of the runner, it has got almost radial component without any tangential component, which is immediately turned by the pipe into the axial direction at the inlet to the drop tube. So, this you will have to understand. This is the nature of the flow. Now, if you look into this diagram, we see that therefore, this is your let this is V r 1. So, this is your V f 1 as we know that is the flow velocity. That means, this is the velocity in the direction perpendicular to the tangential direction. That means, it is radial direction. Similarly, here the flow velocity itself is the absolute velocity because there is no tangential component of the flow at the outlet. So, V 2 is equal to V f 2. Now, one of the main design constraint of the flow is V f 1 is equal to V f 2, which is the flow velocity, flow, flow velocity. This component is sometimes referred to as meridional velocity, meridional. That means, the velocity component perpendicular to the tangential direction. The design is made in such a way that the meridional component or the flow velocity component at inlet becomes equal to that at outlet and ultimately this becomes equal to the axial velocity V a at the inlet to the drop tube. Now, let us see that the typical velocity from the typical velocity triangle, what is the power that is being developed or that is being given by the fluid to the runner frame. As we know that the energy per unit mass is given by the expression from the Euler's equation V w 1 u 1 minus V w 2 u 2. Well, what is V w 1 in this case? This is our V w 1, this is our V w 1 which we can write in our case V w 1 from this triangle. V w 1 can be, let this angle is alpha 1, where alpha 1 is the angle of the guide vanes at its exit, because the incoming velocity, the direction of the incoming velocity is in the direction of the angle of the guide vane. Guide vanes are fixed. So, therefore, when fluid coming out from the guide vanes, its direction of velocity coming from the guide vane, that means there is no relative velocity. Relative velocity is the actual velocity or absolute velocity, because guide vanes are fixed, is equal to the angle of the guide vane at its outlet, which is the angle of the inlet velocity at absolute velocity with the tangential direction, that is alpha 1. So, we can write V w 1 from this triangle, inlet velocity triangle as V f 1 cot alpha 1. Now, our main aim will be to express the energy per unit mass developed in terms of the angles of the vanes at inlet and outlet V f 1 cot alpha. Then we can write similarly what is the value of u 1, u 1, u 1 is this one, this one is u 1, u 1 we can write V f 1 cot alpha 1, that means this one minus this part minus V f 1 in terms of V f 1 if I write cot 180 degree minus beta 1, cot of 180 degree minus beta 1. If I define beta 1, this angle, if I define this angle by beta 1. So, this becomes V f 1 cot of alpha 1, this is minus cot beta 1. So, this becomes plus cot beta 1. Now, in this case we see the design is made in such a way 
that the fluid has zero tangential motion tangential zero component in the tangential direction, zero velocity component of velocity in the tangential direction, which means the whirling component of the velocity at outlet is zero. That means this term is zero. Now you can understand very well if this term is made zero, we get the maximum work or the maximum power developed by the turbine because this becomes zero, so this expression becomes maximum. So in this case, we can write E by M is simply V W one U one, and if we substitute this value of V W one and this value of U one, this becomes equal to V F one square cot alpha one two cot alpha one plus cot beta one. Well, so this is the expression for the power generation or the energy per unit mass rather we can tell this is the energy per unit mass. So, energy per unit mass that is being released by the fluid as it flows through the vanes or runner of the Francis turbine is given by V f 1 square cot alpha 1 cot alpha 1 plus cot beta. So, it becomes a function of the inlet angles of the absolute velocity or the exit angles of the guide vanes and the inlet angle of the runner blades along with the flow velocity which determines the rate of flow through the runner. Well, now we like to find out what is the efficiency eta h, what is the efficiency hydraulic efficiency. Now, what is hydraulic efficiency as you know? The hydraulic efficiency, the numerator is the power developed, okay, power developed, power developed or rather I can write the head developed, rather I can write the head that is the energy per unit weight, head developed divided by the head available, that means the energy available, energy available at the nozzle entrance. Now, power developed we know that is E by M if I express this per unit mass. So, this is the energy developed per unit mass. So, what is the energy available per unit mass? What is this energy available per unit mass? Energy available, please tell me just I will ask you energy available per unit mass we have to find out. Now, if we consider that friction to be 0, then the energy available at the inlet to the runner becomes exactly equal to the energy available at the guide vanes because if we neglect any frictional loss, the total energy remains same. So, what is that energy at the inlet to the guide vane or at the inlet to the runner? How do you find out? Can, please, can we tell this V square V 1 square by 2? Just like the Pelton wheel, Pelton wheel we told that it is V 1 square by 2. But in this case, if I have to find out the energy available at the runner inlet, what is the value of the energy available at the runner inlet? How can I find out? Yes, very good. It is P 1 by rho g plus V 1 square by 2 plus the datum height, if at all any. That means, that depends upon our choice of the reference datum. That means, it comprises kinetic energy, pressure energy and the potential energy. Very good. But how to find out? It is true that this quantity corresponds to V 1 square by 2 plus P 1 by rho 1 per unit mass basis and G z 1. So, these two quantities were absent in case of Pelton wheel. This is because the entire energy was in the form of the kinetic energy. But here at the entrance to the runner, the pressure energies and the potential energy is there. So, to find this, we have to write in this fashion you can find this in this fashion, this energy available per unit mass can be written as the energy developed plus the energy lost that means V 2 square by 2. That means E by M plus V F 2 because V 2 is V F 2, V F 2 square by 2. This is, this is because the, this is the energy 
which is going out of the runner. So, therefore, this is the energy which is extracted by the runner. So, if you discard the friction, we can tell this plus this, this is the total amount of energy which the runner received at its inlet. That means, this is the energy which comprises the kinetic energy, pressure energy and the potential energy. You understand? So, therefore, tactfully we find this without going for evaluating what is the pressure energy or what is the stump P1 by rho 1, we just simply add the amount of energy with which the turbine is going. So, therefore, V2 square by 2 E by M. So, if I add this thing, so we can get this is the amount of energy which was at its inlet because this amount of energy and the energy developed equals to the total amount of energy that the turbine received or the runner received. So, therefore, I can write tactfully eta H is equal to what is that? E by m divided by E by m plus V f 2 square well by 2. Now, if I substitute again if I write this thing well if I write this eta h is equal to E by m E by m well divided by E by m plus V f 2 square by 2, then it is okay. So, here lies the concept. Now, this algebraic steps. Now, if I substitute this expression for E by m and consider that V f 2 is equal to V f 1. So, what I will get? V f 1 will cancel. So, I get 2 cot alpha, can you see this, this line, okay, 2 cot alpha 1 into cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1. That means, E by m is V f 1 square cot alpha 1 into cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1, that I am substituting in place of E by m. Then therefore, what I will be getting? 2, that means, V f 2 square plus 2 of this quantity again cot alpha 1. Oh, this has cancelled. Good, 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 because V f 2 is equal to V f 1, which is cancelled. Very good. 1 plus. Very good. Cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1. This is because V f 1 square and V f 1 square cancel. So, this can be written in a manner 1 minus 1 by, that means if you add 1 and subtract 1 in the numerator, 1 plus 2 cot alpha 1 into cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1. So, this is the expression conventional, this is the most useful and popular expression of the hydraulic efficiency or the runner efficiency in terms of the angles of the vane at the inlet and the guide vane angle at the outlet. That means, alpha 1 is the angle which the absolute velocity makes with the tangential direction and this is the angle which the relative velocity makes with the tangential direction, which means alpha 1 is the angle of the guide vanes at the inlet at the at its outlet. So, all the angles are referred with respect to tangential direction and beta 1 is the angle of the runner at the inlet. So, this is the useful expression for hydraulic efficiency or runner efficiency. This is the hydraulic efficiency, hydraulic efficiency or runner efficiency provided or runner efficiency, well or runner efficiency provided the friction is neglected, provided the friction is neglected. That means, the runner efficiency becomes the hydraulic efficiency, friction neglected in both the guide vanes and in the runner blades. Now, next we come to the expression of degree of reaction, well R, degree of reaction, degree of reaction. How did you define degree of reaction in a turbo machines or hydraulic machines? Please tell me. 
the degree of reaction is the change in energy due to please tell me change in energy change in energy exactly change in energy due to static heat in the rotor that is most important static heat in rotor divided by the total change in change in total energy that means change in total energy is the power developed change in total energy that means it is true that change in total energy is e by m that is the energy per unit mass which we get as power that is the change in total energy of the fluid but what fraction of it is changed due to static heat that means due to the change in the relative velocity and change in the centrifugal heat that means in fact it is the change in the pressure of the liquid pressure energy of the liquid and the change in the pressure energy of the liquid takes place because of the two things we have already recognized earlier this is very important that why the pressure in a pressure will change in a liquid and the liquid flows if there is no swirling or tangential velocities so pressure changes only because of the change in the velocity of the flow velocity of the liquid and this is with respect to a fixed duct so therefore when the duct is moving or the liquid flows through a passage where the solid has a motion that means there is a slip velocity between the liquid and the solid so therefore in that case what happens that it is the relative velocity whose change will cause a change in the pressure number 2 if along with that liquid possesses a swirling motion or the motion in the tangential direction which comes because of a rotation in the passage rotation of the duct i gave an example then what happens if the liquid flows in such a way that there is a change in its radial location from the axis of rotation in course of its flow then a centrifugal head is either released or imposed on the fluid for which there will be a change in its pressure energy or a change in the static pressure so therefore change in the pressure energy either released or gained depends upon two factors change in the relative velocity and change in the tangent centrifugal centrifugal head that means change in the tangential velocity so when the relative relative velocity in decreases then there is an increase in the pressure when the relative velocity increases then there is a decrease in the pressure in a turbine the relative velocity increases so there is a decrease in pressure or decrease in pressure energy similarly in course of flow the centrifugal head is also decreased because the fluid comes from a higher radial location it is a radial inward flow higher radial location from the axis of rotation to a lower radial location so these two quantity con constitutes the change in its static head now it is difficult to evaluate the change in the relative velocity that you know that v r 2 square minus v r 1 square and also the change in the centrifugal head that is u 1 square minus u 2 square of course this part is simple but without doing that what we do change in energy due to static head can be found out if we deduct from the total change in energy the change in the dynamic head which is simple that means we can write this as e by m minus that is the change per unit mass minus this quantity it's simple the change in the dynamic heat that means this part is the energy change due to static heat that means this comprises the change in the pressure rate due to both the change in relative velocity and change in the centrifugal heat because of the change in the rotor velocity from inlet to outlet so now it becomes very simple that we can write this in a fashion 1 minus v1 square minus v2 square well by 2 into e by m okay now we substitute the value of e by m again so let me write r is equal to 1 minus v1 square minus v2 square well 2 e by m well if we again see the value of e by m if you again see the value of e by m is vf1 square cot alpha 1 into cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 
then what we can write? 1 minus v 1 sorry v 1 square minus v 2 square by 2 v f 1 square cot alpha 1 into cot alpha 1 plus well cot beta 1. Now, v 2 is equal to v f 2 and that is equal to v f 1. Why? If you see the velocity triangles that we see the design constant is that v f 1 is v f 2. So, v f 2 is equal to v f 1. Now, if it is so, then this quantity v 1 square minus v 2 square, therefore, I can write here v 1 square minus v 2 square can be written as v 1 square minus v f 1 square, which can be written as v f 1 square cot square alpha 1. Why? Because from this diagram, v 1 square minus v f 1 square is v w 1 square, this one and v w 1 is v f 1 cot alpha. Well, so therefore, we can write that v w 1 square is v f 1 square cot square alpha 1. So, v f 1 square cot square alpha. So, simply we can write 1 minus therefore, v f 1 square will cancel out 1 by 2 cot alpha 1 well into is simple algebraic steps only. Concepts are there when we write this term numerical numerator of this term degree of reaction plus cot well sorry. very good cot alpha 1 by 2 cot very good because v f 1 square will cancel. So, cot alpha 1 will not be there in the denominator at all very good happy. So, if you write this, so v f 1 square will cancel and cot square alpha 1 will be cancelled to give cot alpha 1. So, 2 I am sorry, so 2 cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1. So, again let me write the expression 1 minus cot alpha 1 divided by 2 cot beta 1. I think okay this is the degree of reaction R. Now, we come to the deduction of specific speed, specific speed, well specific speed, specific speed N S T. If you recall the definition of specific speed for a turbine, what is its value N S T? Whenever you will talk about specific speed, you will always refer to the dimension of specific speed until and unless it is told as non dimensionless or non dimensional specific speed, we will always refer to as dimensional specific speed. So, what is the value for a turbine n p to the power half very good h to the power 5 by 4. In the similar way as we did for Pelton wheel, we will find out first we will find out power in terms of the hydraulic efficiency well and the head available rho q, q is the volume flow rate g h. Here by definition h is the head available at the inlet to the turbine. That means, this is the head available to the turbine. So, by definition h is like that. So, here I will write in terms of the definition itself rho q g h eta e. Well, so if I substitute this value, then I will get n s t is equal to n p to the power half means eta h rho q g to the power half h I will take out because h to the power 5 by 4 is there in the denominator. So, therefore, I will write h to the power minus 3 by 4. The manipulation that h to the power half will come out and h to the power 5 by 4 which will give h to the power minus 3 by 4. Then again with the same technique, you can write, we can write the n as the rotational speed u 1 divided by pi d 1. That means, by equating the tangential velocity of the rotor at its inlet with the rotational speed, I can write u 1 by pi d 1. 
it can be written at the outlet also u 2 by pi d 2, but I write at the inlet from which I get n is equal to u 1 by pi d 1. And u 1 if you recall the value I show you that we got the value of u 1 earlier u 1 is v f 1 cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1, this is from the velocity triangle, this is u 1. So, this u 1 is v 1 v f 1 cot alpha 1 minus v f 2 v f 1 sorry cot alpha 1 cot beta 1. So, therefore, v f 1 cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1, this we already derived. So, you just substitute these values of u 1 as v f 1 cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1 divided by pi d 1. Now, you substitute these values in this NST that is the specific speed. So, this becomes equal to u 1 that is v f 1 v f 1 cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1 divided by pi d 1 into eta h rho q g to the power half and h to the power minus 3 by 4. Now, this h we can write as what that is the head available if you remember, we found this head available as, now if we see this, this is the head available, I do not write again, because this is the work developed. That means, this is the change in the energy in the turbine runner and this is the energy with which it is going out. So, this is the denominator of this expression of the hydraulic efficiency that is the head developed that means e by m plus v f s square by 2. So, which is again if we write then we get that h is equal to by its definition h is the head developed which is e by m we recognized earlier plus v f 2 square by 2 what is e by m we derived earlier please head available that is the head available yes head available head this is head available this in this definition this is the available head n p to the power half h to the power 5 by 4 this is the available head this is these are in all this this is the this is the power developed this is the head available these are all out input parameters or you can tell these are the operating conditions that are to be specified for a turbine. This is the power developed, this is the head available, correct. This is the by definition head available. What is E by m? Please tell me the value of E by m which we derived earlier. E by m is V f 1 square cot alpha 1 cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1 and v f 2 is v f 1, so v f 1 square by 2. Well, so that becomes 2 v f 1 square, 2 v f 1 square, 1 plus cot alpha 1 into cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1 divided by 2. 2 v f square plus v f 1 square. So, if I take, so half will come here. So, 2 v f 1 square or 2 we have take common. So, 2 will be, well, so 2. Very good. Divide by 2. Outside the bracket. Yes, sir, that is all right. That is all right. So, v f square divided by 2. V f square divided by 2. That is all Yes, no, divide by 2. Just let me write it. This is equal to 2 v f 1 square. Let us write this one. If you take v f 1 square as common, then have 2 v f 1 square as common, then what will happen? If we take 2 v f 1 square common, then it is all right. 1 plus. Half plus. Why half plus? Because. Huh? If I take v f 1 square common, then what will happen? That is half plus 
cot alpha 1 well cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1 ok 1 plus half. So, that we can write this is ok V f 1 square into what we can write 2 plus same ok all right we keep it like this do not worry we keep it like this V f 1 square common 1 plus half plus half plus half plus this thing ok ok. So, therefore, V f 1 square by 2 into 1 plus 2 you are correct cot alpha 1, a simple algebraic step, nothing great in it, cot beta 1, well. So, this is the thing. That means, if you take V f 1 square by 2 common 1 plus 2, yes, cot alpha 1, cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1, sorry. So, now, if you put this value to this N s t, now we got this value, then N s t is equal to N s t, carefully we will have to do, otherwise they will again mistake in this simple algebraic steps <coughs> at this stage you have to be very careful while doing this pi d 1 then we can write eta h rho q you please see rho q into g also g eta h rho q g to the power half then h to the power minus 3 by 4. So, 2 is there in the denominator. So, 2 to the power 3 by 4 and V f 1 to the power minus 3 by 2 very good minus 3 by 2 3 by 4 minus 3 by 2 and there is another V f 1. So, it will be ultimately V f 1 to the power minus half very good into what will be there 1 plus 2 cot alpha 1 well into cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1 all right this to the power minus 3 by 4. So, this is the final expression let me write again. So, this will be 2 to the power 3 by 4 and all these almost constant quantities eta h rho g q to the power half then V f 1 to the power minus half divided by pi d 1, this remains as it is, then this big quantity in the bracket 2 cot alpha 1 into cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1 to the power. Now, in this context, I like to tell you that this expression of N s t, this is a conventional expression which expresses the N s t in terms of the angles of the veins or the guide vanes, guide vane angles at outlet and the rotor vane angles at inlet and the flow velocity V f 1 which is the measure of the flow rate, the rotor diameter at the inlet. But you do not have to memorize this formula, but you have to know the steps how it is being deduced. So, the expression for uh, well the expression for hydraulic efficiency and the expression for degree of reactions all these things the hydraulic efficiency expressions as you have seen the efficiency of degree of reaction you do not have to memorize this equation to use in the examination. So, you have to deduce this equation and problems will tell you that how your concepts will be applied to deduce these equations under different situations not that you will have to memorize these typical equations for specific speed degree of reaction or hydraulic efficiencies and all these things. Any question please? Where? Please. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. I am sorry, one extra term, one term is missing. Here you can write cot alpha 1, good. Cot beta 1, this will be as it is without any index, ok. Today I cannot tell you there is nothing that where I can check the final expression. There is no point of memorizing this expression anymore, but you see in this stage that whether it is ok or not. So, it is all right cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1. Thank you. Any question? Please. Any question today? Today any question? Whatever I have told. Degree of reaction in the deduction of degree of reaction, hydraulic efficiencies. 
नो क्वेश्चन देन ओके थैंक यू